This tutorial is out of sync. I apologize for this, and it will be fixed in later tutorials. Uh, please watch the podcast for more detailed information. Again, I apologize and hope you enjoy it anyway. Hello and welcome to another tutorial from PH Studios. This tutorial is from the XNA Advanced Techniques series. And we will cover an enhancement to our current screen system. Last tutorial, we discussed a way to convert your current game to using the screens which is having all your code in game and just moving that to play screen. This tutorial we are going to expand on the system and add a menu. So this is what we will create today. Menu system with many entries so we can select and then we choose the desired entry we want, press enter and it will perform an action of our choice. Now this is a very basic way to do the menu system. There will be a more advanced way to do it later on. But for this tutorial, we're just going to get the core basics going. So, create a new project. XNA Game Studio 3.0, Windows Game 3.0. Let's call it Menu System Tutorial. And save it wherever you want. Click OK. Once that is generated, go ahead and follow the previous tutorial, which is adding the screens to your system. Now that you got that done, if you want to keep the logo screen going, just add the PHS logo in the single pixel, or replace the logo of your choice with a different image. I discussed that in an earlier tutorial that is very expandable. Now we right click the content, and we choose new item. And let's make it a sprite font, and let's just call it font. Let's just increase the size to about 26 for the menu entries. Now continue on with the adding to your adding screens to your project. We need the screen manager. We need to set the graphics to a resolution of your choice, or you can just leave it. Now we set the content. We need to set the screen manager to a new screen manager object. We need to pass it this, and then we need to add that to the components. And in the initialize, at, before we debase.initialize, let's just add new logo screen. So for SF5, things should work like we've had it before. Okay. So there we have it. Now we need to continue on and build the menu system. Right click the screen manager folder, go to add new class. And we're going to call this menu screen. And this screen is going to be just like what the intro screen and the game screen do, is just a parent screen for our menu screen implementations. So every menu screen whatever functionality you want for the every menu screen added to this. Since there's no way we are going to get a direct object from menu screen, we're going to make it an abstract. We're always going to make a new class that will derive from menu screen. Okay, let's implement the abstract data. Let's add a region. Fields and properties. Alright. So, this is going to be the very basic way to do a menu screen. We're just going to have a list of string variables that will hold our menu entries. A few tutorials from now, we're going to discuss an advanced menu screen which will make a menu entry class 
Then we'll change that to a list of menu entries that will hold the list, to hold the menu entries instead of a list of strings. But for this tutorial, let's just make a list of string. Let's call it menu entries. And go ahead and initialize that right here. And then we need the property for that. And capital menu entries. And we're not going to have a set, we're just going to have git. And make sure you do the lowercase because you do not want to create an infinite loop. Alright. Now every menu screen is going to have a different way to draw the text. It's going to have different fonts, it's going to have different sizes, it's going to have different accents, or it's going to have different bold or italic or anything you want. So it's going to have an individual sprite font. And it's not going to like that until I have it using. Alright, now we need a public property for that as well. Now that is going to have both get and set because we want to get it and set it inside the implementations of the menu screen. Sprite font, lowercase return, set, sprite font is equal to value. Okay. And you can add comments here. I'm not going to bother that because it will increase the tutorial time. So. Now for the basic menu system we kind of have to do a workaround. We want every menu entry to increase in the y direction. We want it to shift down. As you can see here we want it to shift down for each entry. So all we want to do is manipulate the start position of our menu system. And of course you can have the menu entry 2 go shifted down and shift to the right or left. It's totally up to you. But we have to do the workaround for the basics because we're just having a list of strings where strings doesn't have a position. It just has a string. So when we get to the advanced menu system we are going to remove that workaround and it will be very more, much more powerful than this is. So in order to do the workaround we need to have a vector 2 and we need to add that using we need to add a vector 2 called start position this just holds the start position which is the very first menu entry object and that start position will be the starting point of our other entries as well since they're just being pushed down from that Now we need a public property for that as well. That's going to have a capital S. Now it's going to have both get and set. Return lowercase start position. Set lowercase start position is equal to value. Okay. So after we increment the position, we're going to do that in the update method. So how do we get from the update method to the draw method? We need another vector 2. That will just hold the position. The current position of our current menu entry. And again, that needs a public property. And that's going to have both get and set as well. position is equal to value. Alright. So what we just did is a start position and that will never change unless we want the whole menu system to shift.